Hey everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. Well, this week we're going to take a look at a Chuck Berry style lead, uh, and I'm going to show you how to play everything that I played in the intro, note for note. Uh, and I was reminded when I was putting this lesson together that the reason that I got into guitar in the first place, or one of the big reasons, was that scene in the movie Back to the Future with Michael J. Fox, where he's playing uh, he's playing Chuck he's playing Johnny Be Good by Chuck Berry. And um, if you haven't seen that scene, you got to see it. It's just a really cool scene where he goes back in time and. And he's playing a guitar very similar to this. But anyway, I just realized that as I was putting this together that that was part of my inspiration for even wanting to play the guitar in the first place. And I'm sure it inspired a lot of people um, to play the guitar. So anyway, in this lesson we're going to take a look at the first part. So I've got this split into two parts. So I'm, I'm going to break down the first half. And then if you want to watch the second, actually there's three parts in the in the solo. If you want to watch the, the other two parts, you're going to have to go to activemelody.com and look for EP060. And uh, you'll also be able to download the tablature, as well as the jam track, which I've got in two tempos. So I've got it up to speed, and then I've got a slower version for those of you that are just kind of getting started uh, so that you can practice with. But let's go ahead and take a look at the first part. All right, so we're in the key of B for this. Now, um, I noticed, I watch a lot of YouTube videos of Chuck Berry playing, and I noticed he would play, oftentimes, he'd be playing higher up on the neck. So I wanted to do this in the key of B. Uh, because I, I saw him playing in that key on quite a few songs. So um, when I'm when you're playing in the key of B and you do a bar chord here, your bar goes down on the seventh fret. It's just a major bar chord. Um, but the seventh fret is important because that becomes your root fret for the key of B. And here's what I mean by that. Uh, a lot of you that are familiar with the blues lead course will know exactly what I mean. But uh, I broke that course down into patterns. You have five different patterns. So pattern one, which is kind of home bass, um, looks like this. Now notice the pointer finger. The pointer finger goes down most all the notes that I play with my pointer finger will be here on the seventh fret. That's why it's the root fret. So that what that does is that establishes the boundaries. So uh, at least you can start to understand when I show you these licks where they're coming from. And again, if you want to learn more about that, just check out the uh, the blues lead course over at Melody. So okay. Um, so here's the the first little run we're gonna do. It goes like this. And um, Chuck Berry would play most of his stuff. He plays was always two strings. He's always doing a double string thing. It gives it a fat sound. Um, you'd never hear Chuck Berry going, you know, single string. I mean, occasionally he might work it in, but his signature sound is a double string. That's what gives it just the, the tone and the meatiness. It's very cool. Um, so um, it's easy for you to do, and it's very easy once you understand these boundaries, you'll be able to improvise just like Chuck Berry did uh, and work within the same boundaries that he did. Okay, so this first lick, um, I take my ring finger and I come up to the 10th fret first string. Then I take my uh, middle finger and I come to the uh, 9th fret second string and I play those two notes. Um, and I play them at the same time. Now notice with the right hand I'm just doing two down strokes. I'm just playing strings two and one. Now the other thing that I do is I push them slightly sharp. Just like that. Um, and that gives it a little bit of a twang and uh, kind of a little more of a country feel. But I always tend to do that, uh, at least I'm, if I'm playing right in this area of pattern one. Uh, it's just a nice effect. It gives it a bluesy sound. So now after that, now, here, I know some of you are going, hey, wait a minute, this note is not in the minor pentatonic scale, right? But it is in the major uh, pentatonic scale, and this is this, is this kind of, uh, this confuses some people, but once you get the concept, it's actually pretty simple. When you're playing the major pentatonic scale, it's the same thing as the minor, it's just shifted down three frets. So if that's pattern one in the major scale, this is pattern two. So see that note right there? That's actually in the major pentatonic scale. It's actually pretty simple. If you could just envision an overlay. So what you're seeing right in this area is you're seeing a little bit of an overlap of pattern one from the minor pentatonic scale, but pattern two from the major pentatonic scale. So and that may seem overwhelming, but don't let it be. Just know that this is a lick that you can use no matter what. If you're ever playing a blues, just find the root fret and work and work 
from there and find this little, uh, you know, kind of bluesy, twangy sound, okay? But I just wanted to give you the context. Okay, so that's the first thing that you do. Then uh, I came down and I barred the first two strings on the seventh fret. And just played strings one and two. Now I take my ring finger and I bar the first three strings on the ninth fret, but I'm only going to play strings two and three. Just those two strings. So now we have... And notice with the, my picking hand, it's all down strokes at this point. And Chuck Berry used a ton of down strokes. He didn't do a lot of alternate picking because he did a lot of double strings. And it doesn't work so well when you're doing up strokes and down strokes with double strings. Okay, so then after that I went did this little hammer on thing. So I'm just barring the first three strings on the seventh fret. I'm only going to play strings two and three again. And as soon as I play them, I go ahead and take my middle finger and hammer on to the third string eighth fret. And all that's doing is it's completing the chord. If you think of it, It's really creating the you know that B chord, the B major chord. All right, so let's put those pieces together. So here it is slowly. We have now after I did that, then I did an upstroke at that point. Um, and when I did that upstroke, I I went ahead and pushed down with my ring middle finger here on the the third string on the eighth fret. But I did an upstroke on strings one and two, leaving this middle finger in place so that in case you hit string three, it's covered. You're hitting all, you know, so you can be a little sloppier about your upstroke. But that's what I kind of did, just a real quick. And notice I, I, I released the pressure with my, my fingers so that it kind of deadens the, the note. It doesn't let it ring out like that. So... Now, if I were you and you're having a, you're struggling at this point, just stop there, and you've already learned an awesome blues lick um, that's very Chuck Berry, and just see if you can take the jam track and play along. You know, maybe you do the slower. I've got two versions, so maybe you go with the slower version, and just see if you can just repeat that over and over again. <laughs> And just kind of get comfortable with that. So then the next thing that I do is I play this. This little thing. And all I'm doing, we've already done this. That's the hammer on there where I'm, you know, barring the first three strings on the seventh fret. Or I'm sorry, on the, yeah, no, on the seventh fret. And I'm playing. Now I'm just playing strings two and three for all of this. And so I'm just hammering on to the eighth fret third string. Then I'm going to play strings 2 and 3 on the 9th fret. And then I'm going to come back and do the little hammer on again. So let me do it slowly. It's like this. Let me do it again. Okay? And once you get that little, that little thing, you're going to use that all the time. I mean, I, well... I, you don't have to, but I do. I, I mean, that's just such a comfortable lick to fall into because your hand sort of naturally forms and it's easy to do. So you're getting this huge library of of these double string licks that you can use. Um, you know, in this in this lesson. So just you know, think of how you can reassemble them, and you know, you don't have to play exactly what I'm playing. But, um, you know, you're learning a new vocabulary and you're picking up all these new words and now you can start introducing those words into your playing. All right, so let's, let's back up. So what we have thus far is we have... Let me do it again. Slower. Now, now we get into Chuck Berry 101, which is... Um, it's just really fun to do. Now, if you're on an acoustic guitar, uh, this one, this kind of stuff, you can do it, but it's gonna be, it's gonna, it may hurt your fingers a little bit. So I'd recommend doing this on electric. But you can definitely try it on acoustic, and you know, depending on the string gauge, you could probably follow along if you have a lighter uh, string. But 
So what I do is I kind of anchor my pointer finger down on the seventh fret by barring the first two strings. And those, notice these downstrokes, one, two, three, uh, with my right hand. Now, then I take my ring finger. Now, I've seen, uh, I'm trying to think how Chuck does this, if he uses his middle finger. I think he might use his middle, he has longer fingers, but I think he uses his middle finger when he does this. So just depending on the size of your finger, you know, use whichever one's comfortable. For me, uh, it's more comfortable to use my uh, my ring finger, and what, I, what I'm talking about is these little bends. Uh, and when I do the bend, I actually use two fingers. I use both of these fingers to push the string. I get more better leverage when I'm using two fingers. So experiment with it. Get very scientific about, you know, what your hand is doing behind the neck. I'm using my thumb back there. You know, just kind of, my thumb is just sort of pressed against the back. I'm not, you know, my hand isn't on the neck. My thumb is keeping it away so that I, I can get that leverage for these bends. But, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my, uh, yeah, I'm going to start here on the ninth fret, um, third string, and I'm going to do a full bend. So I'm going to, you know, full bend is bending up two frets. So that's the note we're trying to match. And as soon as I get to the top of the bend, then I go ahead and do another downstroke and play strings one and two barred on the seventh fret. So I keep this bar down the whole time. So notice the timing of it. Um, let me tap my foot. So you can hear how it's just this sort of, it's one and two and three and four, and it's got that kind of thing going. And the rhythm is so critical if you want to get the, the Chuck Berry thing. He, he would do that a lot, um, that kind of run. So I ended up doing five of those. I went one, two, three, four, five. And at the end of the fifth one, I did the triplet, one, two, three, by playing the, you know, those, the, uh, those two strings there on the seventh fret. So let me do those notes together. So we have... So you can see one, two three, four, five, da, da, da. And then I went into another similar type lick that went. And let me show you that one. Um, what I'm doing for that is I'm keeping the bar there. That just sort of stays. Doing the same full bend here on the ninth fret third string. But the timing changes a little. So now listen. So then now there's two, so there's one and two and. One and two and. And for that, um, I'm playing. Now you can do that. I've seen Chuck Berry do this two ways. You can either do it like this, where I'm doing a double string thing. So again, that's just playing strings two and three on the ninth fret, two and three on the seventh fret. And here's a single note, believe it or not. That's the ninth fret, uh, fourth string. Now, depending on the timing and if, you know, I don't know, maybe it's just in what's more comfortable for you, you could just play single strings for that, that part. Like that. And either way sounds good. And when I was doing just the single string, I was just playing string three. So it's nine, seven, and then back to nine on string four. All right, so let me put those, let me just do that last part. So what we're doing is. And I did it uh, several times. Let's see, I did it, um, I think I did it four times. So now let me back up and play, uh, I'll play those two parts together now. So what we have is, we have, um, Was four so yeah it's four now at the end of the fourth well you know what before I get on to that let me let me play the whole thing now up to this point just so you have this as a reference 
Remember, it's always like building a little puzzle. We, you know, I like to think of these little chunks and we put them together. And at the end, you have this cool solo that you can do. So, okay, so here we go. So we have. Now, after that, I played. So there's a lot of straddling that happens between the seventh fret and the ninth fret. So, so what I'm doing there is I'm going to bar the first four strings now on the seventh fret, but I'm only going to play strings four and three. And again, notice these are down strokes. All these are down strokes. Now I'm going to take my ring finger and I'm going to bar the first five strings on the ninth fret, but I'm only going to play strings five and four. So slowly those sound like this. You can see I'm going back and forth. I'm going um, seven, seven, nine, seven, nine, nine. And then I go like this and just walk up. Um, Kind of smoke on water. And what I'm doing there for is uh, 5 and 4, again on the 9th fret, 4 and 3 on the 7th fret, 4 and 3 on the 9th fret. Alright, so now let me put that in context. So that's the timing. Let's just do th do that a few times. One, two, three. Two, three. Um, and it's pretty easy to do because it's just you know you're just you're grabbing these big you know it's you're kind of just doing a lot of bars there between these two. Um, okay. Now after that I went. Now that is uh, another, just a classic Chuck Berry. He would take and, uh, so what I'm doing is I'm barring the first three strings on the ninth fret, but I'm only playing strings two and three. And when, as soon as I play them, I do a bend, release, bend, release, and you're giving this kind of wavy thing where you're, you know, you're bending basically two strings at once. Now, uh, the way that I play, um, I, I pull, so I'm pulling the strings. now. Some players, when they when they do that, they may want to push that. Um, although I guess that would be hard to do with one. Maybe if you're right there, if you're left-handed, then it would work. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull that. So, and you can do it with one finger. It actually does work. It's um, you're instead of using the very tip of your finger, you're kind of using this part of it. But you're just pulling those two strings and just practice doing it. Okay. Now after that, I came and played strings two and three on the seventh fret, and then I just did some single string stuff. I went, and that's just the ninth fret, seventh fret, and ninth fret, all on the fourth string. So let me put those pieces together. If you've ever seen the video Hail Hail Rock and Roll, or if you haven't seen it rather, you've got to check that one out. It's awesome. It's all about Chuck Berry in the late 80s, I believe, and there was Eric Clapton and Robert Cray and um, Keith Richards, and they all did this big tribute um, in, in St. Louis, I believe. It was just really cool. Um, but uh, Chuck, uh, there's, a, there's an interesting scene I remember with um, Keith Richards where he's trying to do some double string bends just like that and he was having a hard time with it and Chuck Berry was giving him a hard time or something but it was kind of kind of cool all right so let's back up so to this point we have
after that I went and rounded out that first part. And for that, all I'm doing again, we've already done this, but I did, I'm playing strings two and three again, uh, barring the, the seventh fret, and I'm gonna do the hammer on to the eighth fret third string. Then I'm gonna just play strings two and three on the ninth fret, again, just doing a single bar. So, so it's one, one, two, three, and then I do do the hammer on again. And then I just sort of did some like mute notes or ghost notes rather. Um, and then I just played, uh, really it's, it's a bar chord. You could do, think of the bar chord there on the seventh fret. Instead of using the full bar, I'm just playing strings four, three, two, and one of that bar chord. Um, so that, to do that, you you know, it's the same as playing an F chord down in first position, but you're playing it up here. Um, but you're not playing the whole thing. I'm just playing the, the top four strings. Um, but that's how I ended it. So barring the first two strings there on the seventh fret, my middle finger goes down on the eighth fret third string, which we've already played, you know. And then my ring finger goes down on the ninth fret fourth string. And then you can play that chord. So... Again. And you can hear the little muted thing. Uh, you don't have to do that. I just sort of naturally, just to keep the rhythm going, almost in my mind. You could do it that way too, and just to stop it. But um, all I'm doing is just kind of muting the strings for that. All right, so let's get through this. Let me play through this whole first part then. Let's do it one more time so you have it as a reference. So here we go. And that's really all there is to the first half. So now uh, we're going to... For Active Melody uh, Premium members, you're going to want to go and watch video part two, and I'll get into the, uh, you know, the other two two pieces. So that's all I have for this part.